Okay. Join me now to react is Joe Concha and Kevin Walling. Thanks so much for joining me uh, on this Saturday night. Always a pleasure to have y'all here. Uh, Kevin, I'm going to start with you because, you know, look, I think the American people are reasonable people. They want to have a civil conversation. You guys do this every Saturday night with me. But one thing continues to bother me and a lot of gun owners is the lack of knowledge on guns, to say that they're military weapons, to not understand cosmetic, what triggers are, not understanding what clips are versus your magazines. Can we really have a legitimate debate, Kevin, without actually knowing what guns are? Lawrence, I think it's actually a really good point that you make. I think we need to have a deep dive in terms of all these different kinds of weapons that are out there, high-capacity magazines, what these uh, these guns actually do, to actually have a conversation that meets somewhere in the middle where we can find uh, uh, some kind of middle ground on this issue. I don't think you're going to see an assault weapons ban like we saw uh, in the 90s. That's something that Chris Murphy obviously is fighting for, but realistically, Senator from Connecticut, uh, who's very passionate about this issue, Democrat, has said the votes likely aren't there, but we can probably have a conversation about high-capacity magazines. We can have a conversation about some kind of uh, national red flag law, uh, for example, that, uh, you know, a state like Florida passed in the wake of uh, uh, Parkland. So there are ways that we can have this conversation with you uh, and Joe that is reasonable, where we meet Americans in the middle, where we actually have a conversation on the facts, because there is a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation about what these weapons actually are. Yeah. So, Joe, the problem is, a lot of Democrats and the people specifically that are leading this debate aren't reasonable like Kevin. So can we actually have the debate when the people aren't reasonable? Lawrence, both sides dig in here. We've seen this after every school shooting. Liberals say we need more gun control, and then on the right you see, well, we need to fortify schools and we need to focus on mental health. And when the White House press secretary and Karine Jean-Pierre says that the president does not believe in fortifying schools and improving that aspect. I, I'm sorry, that, that's a non-starter for me because I think that honestly, and I wrote a column in The Hill about this last week, you have one entry point in and out of schools. You stagger the school day where each grade goes in every 15 minutes because you can't have hundreds of kids going all in at once. And then at that entry point, you have ex-military, ex-police, or even current police on duty there behind bulletproof glass, and you can't get through that entry point if you're a school shooter, if you're somebody who wants to do harm, unless you get by that particular person. That's a starting point right there. I think where the compromise can come that I'd like to see from the right is that almost every school shooting is carried out by somebody under 21 years old. So maybe if you can't get a drink until you're 21, then you can't buy a gun until you're 21 unless you went and to the military and you are properly trained and supervised in that regard. I think if we could start there to say, okay, let's do a couple of billion to fortify every school, but then we'll raise the age to 21 because most school shooters are under 21. I think that's a good starting point. It doesn't stop every school shooting, but boy, that would improve the situation. You know, I think people start pushing back and they say, look, if I can serve in the military and I have to protect my country at age 18, or if I yeah. have the right to vote, then it becomes problematic. But Joe, uh, I'm sorry, Kevin, what about that suggestion that is coming from Joe, that he just extended the olive branch, not something I technically agree with. I've always been a young man that's out there and I wanted to protect myself very early. But what about his suggestion there? I think it's a good one. And actually, there's a lot of funds uh, that have been underutilized uh, from the COVID uh, funding uh, with our schools uh, that can be repurposed. And I'm with Joe in terms of provi providing more of these resources for schools, but not just in terms of fortification, strengthening uh, uh, processes in terms of the physical plan of these schools, but let's also put some of that money into hiring more guidance counselors, mm -hmm. uh, hiring more uh, people involved with uh, mental health issues, especially for these young people that can identify uh, in the these mostly young men uh, problems from an early age. We have the resources to do it. We just need the will. And I think we can find that middle ground, providing more resources for school, maybe potentially raising uh, that age yeah. uh, to 21. And, and Lawrence, I think it's an important point that you make. But, you know, I, I have friends that are Marines yeah. for three months before they were even given a bullet after they were given that assault weapon. Uh, they uh, mm -hmm. had that, uh, trained with that. Joe, a quick final thought, brother. Uh, well, you know, I, I think that we're having a good conversation here, right? And I'm not saying it's the end-all, be-all, but in an election year, Lawrence, there is no way that 
any Republican would ever endorse, almost any anyway, would endorse raising the age to 21 to buy a gun, uh, nor would any Democrat say, you know what, you're right, we should put, we spend trillions every year in this country on things that we really kind of don't need, uh, but yeah. we're not going to allocate billions to fortify schools. And I say this as a parent. I yeah. don't say this as somebody from the right or the left. As a guy who has a six and an eight-year-old in elementary school, just please fix this problem in some way, or at least try. Yeah. That's all I'm asking for. I was for just you. there on the ground. I, I, I hear the passion. Joe, Joe and Kevin, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Also tonight, a new